Hi everybody, it's Meg from Books Off the Beaten Path. It is the last day of August here in Okie Dokie. Wait a minute, it's the last day of August everywhere, not just in Okie Dokie, but it is hot as hellfire. <laughs> and I'm wearing long sleeves for some reason. All right, so I am going to do a book review. Now, normally I've been doing an early morning book review, but if you watch the previous video I made, my mother's broken her ankle. So all my mornings are taken up with putting the boot on, getting the medicine down, getting her in and out of the restroom. You don't need to know the whole story. I'm sure you're thankful that you don't. You can watch the other video if you wanna see it, but I do think it is a religious experience. But we'll get to that. We'll we'll see at the end of all this. All right, so getting back to my review. Candy Stripers. Now, Candy Stripers, I gave four stars. I was going to give it three stars until we got to the very end. The very end saved it. So let me tell you about this book. It was written in, where's my copyright date? 1958 by Lee Windham. So it was written in 1958 by Lee Windham and it starts out with Bonnie Schuler. And Bonnie Schuler is a typical teenage girl in the 1950s. She's got a really high ponytail and she's got blonde hair and she is bummed out because she can't go to the beach. They have a beach house and it's summertime and she can't go to the beach house because the family had to buy a new car that year and they can't afford to go to the beach house. So they rented the beach house out. So all of her friends are gone and she just doesn't know what to do and she's very depressed and her on and off boyfriend, her kind of steady, and his name is Rock, R-O-C-K, and they just, she writes him just as dumb as dirt. And that apparently he's a big football player and she writes him in that sort of um, a stereotypical dumb jock kind of way, which irritated I it didn't irritate me the way she wrote him but I mean I, I wouldn't be hanging around with rock I just she made him very unappealing probably for a good reason anyway so Bonnie she doesn't know what she's gonna do and there's this girl who lives next door and her name is Nancy and Nancy is a candy striper at the local medical center. And so she says to Bonnie, come and be a candy striper with me. I've been a candy striper for a year. Come and be a candy striper with me. It's really a lot of fun. And so Bonnie's like, no, nah, I don't know if I want to be a candy striper. You know, Bonnie's pretty selfish. She doesn't really care for caring for other people. She doesn't see medicine as any kind of road for her she doesn't she's just not interested in it whatsoever but she doesn't have anything to do and so she goes ahead and she signs up and she doesn't like it the first part of the book is very much showing how much she does not like being a candy striper um we're introduced to some other characters we have pixie and denise and mavis and mavis and I think it's Denise. I know it's Mavis, but they get this, they get fired for playing around with the beds. You know, like they're cranking the beds in silly ways, not with patients in them, but they get caught kind of playing around. So they get fired. So Bonnie gets fired too. Um, but they do bring her back because Mavis, to her credit, goes to the head of the candy stripers and said, look, Bonnie didn't have anything to do with it. She was just in the room, so you don't need to fire her. So they call Bonnie back. So Bonnie goes back, but she's not thrilled about going back. She's just thrilled because she's not been fired. That was so embarrassing for her and so upsetting for her. So in the meantime, as she's going through all of this, these experiences, like she has a burned baby, like the baby has suffered some burns and she, you know, pats the baby and sings to the baby for a really long time. And, and then there's um, other people that she pushes around in wheelchairs and they, she reads to them and everything like that. And the whole time that she's doing this, she is beginning to understand that what she is doing is important, no matter how minor or small it is. We'll then enter 
David. David is, here's David right here. He's in his car. And I made fun of David on because on the back it says, one day she met David, a technician who was interested in a hospital career. Somehow he made her feel very, rather special and very grown up. And I thought, uh-oh, David's going to come on to her. Well, he kind of does and he kind of doesn't. Um, what he does, Dave, now first off, let me just say this. David is 22 and Bonnie is 15. And so David starts bringing her home from work in his car. And mom and dad, who are only in it for like 10 pages, you can condense them down to about 10 pages, um, are fine with that. See, now, I, I guess we live in a different day and age, but I wouldn't be fine with that. I don't have girls. Um, I have sons. But if my son was picking up a 15-year-old, and you know, and they're both in their 20s and everything and driving them home, I'd be like, what the hell are you doing? So he picks her up, um, drives her home every day, um, lets her sit really close to him. They have a swimming party where he goes together and he's gazing up at her and he just sa says she looks so cute outside of her candy striper uniform and everything like that. And Bonnie falls hard. She falls hard for David. And finally, because I don't, and I'm going to go ahead and give you the spoilers because I don't know if you'll ever find this book and ever read it. Finally, she confesses her love for David. And David is totally taken aback. David is like, what? Oh, I, I, I don't know why you would feel like that. I don't know why you would think like that. I was just being nice to you because you look like my sister. What? Boom. David, you led her on. You let her on, David, down the garden path. You got way down the garden path with her. And so then Bonnie is devastated and she hates being a candy striper even more. So she's still hating being a candy striper. Now she's gotten her heart broken. How does she continue on? Well, here's what happens. There's a big explosion at a chemical plant. And so all of these, they have like an ER kind of television series episode where just stretchers are coming in and out and ambulances are coming in and out and she's just doing everything, you know, and she's running here and she's running there and she's helping the nurses and she's helping the doctors and she's doing all this. And guess what? She ends up feeling proud of herself. She ends up feeling proud of herself. And so I'm reading the book and I'm going along and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's a three star. It's a solid three star. But then I get to the very last of it. And the very last of it is that her stint as a candy striper has ended. And she has been asked by Nancy to go with Nancy for the capping ceremony. Um, because Nancy gets a cap because she will be a candy striper. This will be her second year. She gets a cap. And so she goes to the capping ceremony and it's very religious like, um, there's no religion mentioned otherwise in the book. And I don't know really anything about nursing other than what I've read in Cherry Ames, but the capping ceremony is they, they kneel down on a cushion um, they get their cap pinned on their head by the head nurse. They light a candle. They walk out. It's a very religious kind of feel to it and all this kind of stuff. And Bonnie realizes that she actually accomplished such stuff over the summer. And even though she went through a lot, a lot for Bonnie, you know, not getting, go to, not getting to go to the beach, and having her heart broken by David, she was proud of herself. And she goes home and Rock is there. And then the next door neighbor who she's sort of kind of on and off flirting with, his name is Cliff. They're both there to see her. And normally she would love that because she's all about the boys. She's all about the boys wanting to like her and everything like that. And I'm looking now to find this passage that okay here it is oh yes she'd grown up considerably during the summer in just the last week as a matter of fact she would be a better poised she would be better poised emotionally and socially a new year was on the way 
a year of fun and school and helping out at the medical center because she's decided to go back and continue to be a, a, a candy striper. And who knew where that might lead? She might decide to be a nurse or even a doctor. But for now, being a candy striper and just living would be enough. And I just, that really hit me. Because all this time, she's been very vapid and she's been very, oh, I kind of go work in pediatrics and I hate working with nurse winners. And she drops a test tube full of urine. And she gets in trouble for that and she has to clean it up and it's disgusting and she hates the whole thing. But you know what? At the end, she realizes that those small acts of kindness that she did actually made her change in a positive way. She reflected on her experiences and was able to see the change they had made in her. She was conscious enough of herself, which the book doesn't really lead you to believe until the very end. Why not be a Dr. Bonnie? Why do you have to spend all of your time with the boys? You can do this. And, and, and just starting out small, that's what I loved about the end, was the end was sort of saying, just starting out small and performing these small acts of kindness, you don't know where they'll lead you. So anyway, four stars, Candy Striper, loved it. I've started reading a Dr. Kildare, which will go through like that because it's really short. But anyway, Give me a like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment. You know how much I love the comments. And I will check you later.